I'm finally sitting down to film this video. I'm taking advantage of both the girls napping at the same time. So I was wanting to do this video as like a proper sit down video and like have my hair and makeup done, but I just feel like I'm never gonna get it done. So I'm going to do it now. So I wanted to talk about my IUD experience. I have never had an IUD before. I was always on birth control pills and then I wasn't on any sort of birth control after my first daughter. So after I had our second daughter um, at my six week postpartum appointment, my doctor wanted to talk about what I was thinking about doing. And because I was breastfeeding, there's only so many birth control options that you can do that don't dry up your milk supply because of hormones and things like that. So. Um, she had mentioned the IUD, which if you're not familiar, it's a, it's called an intrauterine device that basically is this little tiny plastic thing that they insert through your cervix and um, you can get the hormone one so it gives off a very low dose of hormones so that you don't ovulate. Um, if you know if by chance you do ovulate, it helps ki kill the sperm, all these little things and it's good for five years. Um, so. You know it's a good option if you don't plan on having kids for a long time or you're not sure and you don't want like your husband to have a vasectomy so when she mentioned it i said that i you know have heard horror stories about it i wasn't really sure if that was best for me and she said lots of people get it done she's had lots of patients um, that are very happy with it uh, i said okay, I'm gonna go home and think about it. I want to talk to, you know, friends, people I know, just to get more personal experiences. And she said, okay, like, just make sure you don't Google because the people that, you know, put stuff on the internet are usually the ones with bad experiences. So I said, yes, of course. So I think I took about two weeks to think about if I wanted to get it done. And in the end, I was like, you know what? Let's get it done. Um, like we have medical coverage, it was, it was going to be $80 because they're like four or $500. They're not, you know, cheap if you don't have benefits. So we were in the midst of moving. So I wanted to get it done while I still had a family doctor. I felt like I had enough people down there. Um, you know, one less person down there, the better. So it was the day we were driving from one city to the next. So I wasn't doing any heavy lifting or anything like, like, like that we were just gonna be driving. So I heard you have some cramping, um, you know, just feeling achy after. So I figured, you know, that's a good day to do it, not doing anything strenuous. So um, my appointment was at nine in the morning. She told me to take some uh, ibuprofen an hour before my appointment just to help with the cramping. And I just wanna say this right now. What happened to me is a known risk of getting an IUD. Um, you know, it's not something freak anything like that is of it is a known risk and risks come with anything so of course you consent to it thinking that it's not going to happen to you but there is always that risk so if you're on here um searching for all the negative things you're going to come across them but one of the things that i did was i asked a lot of friends and everyone that i talked to had such great experiences so i mean most of the time these the good always the bad but unfortunately for me i got the bad experience so um at the appointment they basically have to manually dilate your cervix with like a thing they stick up there and she said to expect some cramping obviously like when you are dilating naturally it's not pleasant so when she stuck the thing in I felt sharp shooting contraction like pain but instead of you know it tightening your belly it like basically shot straight up my body it was it was really painful I'm not gonna lie and then when it was inserted I felt way more pain um it took my breath away I felt sick after I felt like throwing up that's how painful it was and you know she didn't really say anything um she was just explaining the strings that you uh, are attached to the IUD, how she kept them a bit longer just in case, but that you don't feel them. Um, and that's how you remove it is with the strings. So after it was done, it was a quick, you know, relatively fast procedure minus, you know, being uncomfortable. And then she said that she wanted to send me for an ultrasound that day to just to check the placement because I've never had one before. And I just, but never, I honestly wasn't even thinking much of it. I said, okay, sure, no problem. Like we're here all day. 
um, the hospital called me that day. I went in for the ultrasound and the ultrasound tech asked why I was there. And I said, my doctor just wanted to make sure that the placement was good. And she said, oh, does she think that it's not? And I said, I don't know. I, she never said anything. And I, I, I don't know. She just didn't say anything. So she's like, oh, okay, that's weird. Um, and then of course the ultrasound techs can't say anything during the appointment. So I literally just laid there in silence and she spent some time and then she stopped and said that she wanted to speak with the radiologist to make sure that he was happy with the pictures, the images. And that's when I all of a sudden, like it all sort of hit me that, okay, something is not right. And the doctor knows that something is not right because they don't normally leave like that. So she left the room for what felt like an eternity. Um, she came back and said, okay, yep, your doctor will have this report today and you'll hear from them. So I just, you know, I still felt uneasy, but I mean, it couldn't have been that bad because she's sending me away from a hospital. So I told Dan right away um, that I felt like something wasn't right, but I mean, I felt fine otherwise. So I think it was like two hours later, I got into the vehicle with our two daughters to drive. It's about a two hour drive. And then Dan was in the U-Haul truck driving um, by himself. So I left before him. And then it was around five o'clock, my phone started ringing while I was driving and it was my doctor's office. And instantly I felt sick because one, why would they call me at 5 p.m. when they close at four? Um, this whole thing just kind of like had me uneasy. So I pulled over and I got out of the car because Harlow was crying. So I got out and my doctor, the other doctor at the clinic, not the one who did the IUD, she said that they got the images back and the IUD was not anywhere on the screen. So she basically said that it most likely perforated my uterus, meaning went through my uterus and they can't find it. So basically this little device is somewhere in my body. She then asked me if I was feeling any abdominal pain, any severe cramping to feel my stomach for hardness. Um, I said, no, I'm, I'm feeling fine. So she said, you know, hopefully it's just an image error and because I'm not feeling any pain, that's a good sign. Um, she asked if I could come back to the hospital later that night or to go to a different one to see an OBGYN. And I said, well, I'm driving to Kelowna right now. Um, is there any way I could see one there? So she said, yes, for sure. She's gonna call around, see if um, uh, OBGYN could see me that night um, and just to wait for her. So I didn't tell Dan just because he was driving this giant truck. I didn't want him to worry. I didn't want him stressed out more. So instantly I started crying while I was driving. Harlow was crying. O'Reilly was screaming because the iPad died. It was just, it was extremely overwhelming to say the least. And then of course now I'm like feeling every little twinge, pain, prick, everything like that. I'm driving to Kelowna. It has now been like an hour and a half and I'm still feeling crampy, you know, which I thought was just routine. So I decided I'm not waiting for my doctor. Like, this is ridiculous. This is my body. I'm not waiting for her to call around when I can just go to the emergency room and get it done right then and there. What she said that they would have to do is get a CT scan to get better images to see where it is in fact in my body. So I eventually told Dan that I needed to go to the hospital. I want this thing out of me. I need to find out where it is. And he agreed. So my mom took Rylan. We took Harlo with us to the hospital because I was exclusively breastfeeding her. I just didn't want to stress about her not being able to take a bottle with her at my mom's house. So my friend met me there until Dan was able to come. And um, I met with the ER doctor. We didn't have to wait a whole lot. I think it was like an hour or two. I explained the situation. He was like, oh, okay, well, yes, let's do um, a CT scan. We will request the uh, images from your previous hospital to get another opinion and then we'll kind of see where we're at. But because you're you know, not in pain, it's a good sign. So maybe it's just where it is supposed to be, but they couldn't see it, just like my other doctor said. Um, while we were waiting for all the testing to be done, 
my doctor called me back and she finally said that she got a hold of an OBGYN in Kelowna, but they couldn't meet me until Monday and because I'm not in any pain um, to just wait. It is like Friday, it was Thursday or Friday and I said, there is no way that I am waiting three, four days with this thing in my body, not knowing where it is, um, just to wait. Basically they want it, you know, it's okay until it's not okay type of thinking. And I said, there's no, like I am my advocate. I'm my own advocate for my body. I am not waiting around. That is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. So um, the ER doctor uh, said that he didn't want to do a CT scan right away because it is high radiation and because I'm young, you know, and still wanting to have kids in the future maybe. Uh, he wanted to do an x-ray and then two more ultrasounds. So at the hospital, I had an x-ray, two more ultrasounds done, and finally the results were in that um, they were actually able to finally see the thing. So thankfully I didn't have to do the CT scan. But while I was getting the ultrasound done, the ultrasound tech, um, she kept making faces and then she was like, um, are you in any pain right now? And I said, no, like, should I be? <laughs> um, so I just knew something wasn't right. I knew it wasn't where it's supposed to be, even though I wasn't in any pain. But the um, doctor met with us, this is at like four or five hours now at the hospital. He said that they were able to see the IUD, it did go through my uterus, but um, he spoke with the on-call OBGYN and she said if, we, if he's able to see the strings, he can just pull it out and the uterus will heal itself on its own because um, it's such a, I don't know, is it a muscle? I don't know. Either way, it can heal on its own. Obviously, I'm not having kids anytime soon. Um, maybe not at all, but he said it wouldn't affect any fertility. So I said, fine, just get this thing out of me. I don't want to deal with this anymore. So back up they went. He said that he was just able to see the strings to be able to pull it out. Um, if they weren't, they were gonna have to put something in my body and try to pull it out another way. Um, or in the worst case scenarios, you need you require surgery. So thankfully they, so he was able to pull it out. Um, as far as pain, I felt the same cramping, but obviously not as bad. And I was just, it was just one of those moments where it's like, why me? Why is this happening? Especially when I had reservations about it from the very beginning. It was almost like my gut instincts were like saying, I told you so this entire time. So in the end, <laughs> Um, I was physically okay and it just goes to show that just because you're not in any pain doesn't mean that something's not right. You have to go with your gut instincts. So I'm glad I went into the hospital. I'm glad I didn't wait for my doctor. I'm just, I'm glad with what I did. Um, I just had some spotting and cramping after it was removed and I told the doctor at the hospital, I said, well, that was the most expensive one day form of birth control I've ever had. Um, I would have been extremely upset if I paid four or $500 just to have it ripped out within less than 24 hours later. But um, that is just my experience with it. I will not be getting another one, that's for sure. But again, this is just my personal experience with it. I have friends who have had them. They have had great um, experiences with it. They've had them inserted, removed, had kids, had them back inserted and no issues at all. And then of course, you know, there's gonna be people that have situations like me where it's just one of those known risks, unfortunately. Um, a friend of mine after the fact, she had told me that her friend had this happen to her, but it went through like other organs and she actually um, isn't able to have kids anymore because they had to remove stuff i don't know if it was like part of her uterus or something um but they did have to be more invasive about it that is just again my experience um i'm sure some people will comment saying that they've had theirs forever they love it that's great this is just 
something that happened to me and it is a known risk and you consent to it. The doctor tells you that this is something that can happen, but it's very rare. So as far as upcoming videos, I'm gonna start getting back into it. I say this every time. Please keep in mind, this is not my job. YouTube is not my income. The YouTube is a hobby to me. I don't feel like I have to have like a strict schedule on things. This is just my creative outlet. I enjoy filming and uploading. You know, I, I enjoy it. I just don't treat it like a job. So I know it's super frustrating as a, you know, a viewer subscriber, but that's that. Oh, Harlow is awake. So do stay tuned for more videos and um, I do apologize for not being consistent, but this is just normal life. I am a mom of two and life is crazy. So that's that. Um, if you know, if you have similar experience with the IUD, comment down below just so um, other people can hear your experiences, whether it's good or bad. I think it's really good to research, um, ask questions, go with your gut feeling and just choose what's best for you. Like I said, you are your own advocate. So thanks so much for watching and stay tuned for more videos.